crazy. It's the most bizarre thing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily swap heads and match skin tones in Photoshop. All right, so basically we need two things. We need a main image, and then we need a head that we're going to use to replace the head on the main image. Now, when you're selecting a head to replace it, you want to pick one that is kind of looking in the same direction. So mine's not perfect here. Like Luca is looking very much off to the side like this, like more of like a 45 degree angle where Adam Sandler is looking more straight on, but they're kind of in the same direction. And if you're sitting somewhere like Luca is standing right here, he could pivot his head around. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does make it a lot easier if they're facing almost in the same direction. So to do that, all you do is go to your head image, go to your move tool up here, and then just click and drag this over to the tab that is your main image. Keep clicking like you're holding click down still, drag it down and then let go. If something like this comes up, just click OK and that's fine. So now we have two layers. We have our background like main image and then we have the head image right here. And obviously we need to get rid of all this extra stuff right here. So we're gonna use the this right here, the quick selection tool. So the fourth one down, if you don't see this, just right click, cause you might see magic wand tool. You can actually use either one for this, but I'm gonna use quick selection tool and then just click select subject right here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see. And Photoshop will make a very good selection. The new select subject is really good. So it makes a great selection around Adam Sandler right here, but I don't need all of this. So let's just say you have like something like this. You have like a dent in that it makes that it's, you need that part and it didn't select it. Then just use this plus right here to go along the edge and bring whatever you need back into your selection. And if you have extra, like I have over here, I'm gonna make my brush just a little bit bigger you can use the minus to get rid of the extra stuff that you don't need. I'm gonna keep his neck down here for now because um, I'm gonna deal with that after. Even if it has some of the shirt in it, it's not a big deal for me right now. And I'm obviously gonna go back to the plus now and shrink this because I lost some of his ear right there and some of his ear over here. Okay, so once you think you have the selection that you want, just go into select and mask and you can clean it up a little bit more, especially around hair. I would use this second one right here. And if you just go along the edge of the hair, it'll help kind of select the hair a little bit better along there. And for everything else, I don't really care because I'm going to fix it up after. So you can go over here. I'm going to shift my edge back a bit and that's about it. And then down here, output to just change it to a layer mask and click OK. So your selection still might not be perfect. So if you have like a little bit of blue around the ear here and around here. So all I'm gonna do is click on my mask and I'm gonna make sure my color here is black in the foreground. So click on it like this if you don't have black and just crank it into the corner and click okay. And then you're gonna go to your brush. And when you're on a mask, the brush being black makes it kind of like an eraser. It's gonna cover up those parts. And if you flip to white, it's gonna bring it back. So I'm gonna start with black and I'm gonna make my hardness around 75. And I'm just gonna drop the size down cause I'm just dealing with little kind of parts like this. And I'm just gonna paint over the parts that are like the blue that was sticking out. Anything that's kind of jutting out here that I don't want, like around his head right here. And I'm just gonna kind of go along the neck edge to get rid of that extra little bit cause I don't want any of that that was part of the shirt. So if you have something like this though, that you've kind of dented in and you want to bring it back, then just switch to white and paint it back in. You can always go back and forth as long as you're on the mask. And you can see here that the little white kind of blotch here, that's the head that we have that we have left. And then the black is what's covered up that we don't uh, have anymore that's kind of been erased for now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is match up our heads. So go over to your move tool up here click on your head and drag it over so it's overlapping with the other one. Then just go control T and this will allow you to resize and rotate it. Just make sure up here that this chain is clicked. So if it looks like this, like not clicked, make sure it's clicked down because that'll help preserve the aspect ratio. So you might have like, uh, your head might be much bigger than your the head of the original image. 
So if you need to, go to the corner and scale it down. And if you go outside the corner like this, you can rotate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match up my chins and kind of the width of their heads because Adam Sandler as he notes in his movies has kind of an egg head so the you know the size of his head this way is going to be bigger than Luca's so I'm going to kind of match up the chins actually I'm going to go over here to opacity and just kind of drop it down a little bit so I can kind of see both maybe back up a little bit and I'm just going to try and line them up and scale them to be somewhat similar like that and match up the chins that looks pretty good and then I'm just going to click when you think you have it rotated properly and scaled properly then just click check up here that'll apply the transformation and then just bring your opacity back up now what we have to do is get rid of this extra bit of hair and stuff that's behind from Luca still so just hide your the new head layer click on the background layer the main image and we're going to use this clone tool over here so this kind of stamp looking thing that's right underneath the brush and then all you're going to do is hold alt and i'm going to duplicate kind of some of this i'm going to clone some of this background to kind of cover up some of his hair here so i'm going to click kind of like over here and you can notice that that becomes a brush and now i can paint with that brush so i'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger maybe and make sure your hardness is right down on the clone stamp Okay, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to sample something over here. And then I'm just going to paint. So you can see that I'm painting with whatever I selected over here. It's now painting with that over here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Don't paint too much. I'm going to click another selection, maybe right here. So I can paint some of his hair over right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to hold Alt again, click over here and paint out some of this right there. Now, if you have a background that's a little more complicated like this one, I would suggest using the lasso tool and content aware fill. So first we'll use the lasso tool to trace really close around the head right here. Just go kind of through the nose like this and then back up like that all the way around, staying close. Then just go up to edit, fill, and then switch contents to content aware. Click OK, and it should do a pretty good job of eliminating most things while keeping some of the details around the outside. And then obviously just use the clone stamp tool and or content aware fill to fix up anything else you need. So now it looks pretty good on the overlap. We don't have any hair jutting out or anything, so that's good. But we now have this issue of Adam Sandler's neck kind of overlapping here. So to fix that, it's pretty easy. Just click on your mask, go back to your brush, make sure that it's a black brush. And I'm gonna increase this just a little bit. This time drop the hardness down quite a bit, even to zero is fine. And then all you're gonna do is paint over the neck right here to kind of blend the two images together, the new head and the original body. So you have to go kind of along the edges right here to kind of blend them to make sure they look kind of similar don't worry about the color difference just yet just kind of have both images kind of fade into each other so up here i might have to lower the brush size a little bit to get some finer detail in here because if i leave it too big it's going to blur out some of his face as well so i'm going to kind of get in there and remember if you take out a notch like this like you do something you don't want just flip this over to white and you can bring it back like that or obviously hold control and hit Z to undo. All right, so at this point we are ready to match the skin tones and to do that it's pretty easy. Just click on your head layer and then go down here to this half circle thing, your adjustment layers, click on it and add a curves right here and this will pop up. Then click on this little half circle right there, not on the mask, on this part and then select the second picker right here. Then go over to your colors over here, click on it so you can see the color picker thing open up. You don't need to do this, but I just like to see it opened right here. And then you're just gonna use the picker to select a neutral skin tone from the main image. So I'm gonna kinda click maybe right there and you'll see the color show up over here. Then click okay. And then? No, and then, I, I, that's, that's all I want. And then? <laughs> And then, and then I'm, and then I'm, done, then nothing else because I'm done ordering, okay? And then? And then all you're gonna do is right away, you're gonna go and click on kind of a neutral spot from your new head image. So I'm gonna click 
kind of up on the forehead right here. And you're gonna notice your image is gonna go kind of a wonky color. In this case, it's green, which is the opposite of red. Like Adam Sandler's face was a little bit red, so it's gonna go the opposite. But we don't want it to impact the entire thing. We only want it to impact Adam Sandler's head, the new head right here. So to fix that, we're just gonna go over here and we're gonna go up to this little thing right here and click on that and that's called a clipping mask. And what that does is that puts this little arrow right here, meaning that this curves thing is only gonna be applied to the head layer and not anything else, just the one that's directly below it. So, but now it's, it looks a little bit green. Before, if I take this off, it was a little bit red. Now with that on it, it's a little bit green. But all that is, is that's to compensate for the red. So now we just have to go over to opacity and slide it along here until we get kind of the, the blend of red and green to have it match the skin tone of Luca's body right here. So I think that looks pretty good. So just play around with the slider until you get it to the spot that you think looks pretty good. Now, if for some reason that technique doesn't work for you, you can also try this. So I'm gonna hide this curves layer that I just did. I'm gonna go down here to this half circle again, the adjustment layers, and I'm gonna add a color balance this time and I'm gonna do it manually. So if I look here, it's more red, so I can try and take some of the red away and then maybe try and take, add some yellow back in. So you can add color balance and do it manually if you want as well. And while that looks a lot better than the original, there's still a couple more things we can do to his face to make it kind of match the image a little bit better. The first, I'm gonna add another uh, adjustment right here. This time I'm gonna add a levels and I'm gonna put a clipping mask on it right away so it's only impacting his face. And I'm just going to kind of darken it a little bit on this side. Uh, I'm gonna take away with this little slider down here, this takes away some of the highlights because his, his face is pretty bright on this side. So I'm just gonna take some of the highlights off a little bit and then maybe mess around with some of this contrast up here to make it kind of blend a little bit better. So I think that looks pretty good. But something I like to do at the end of a lot of my projects is click on the top layer. So this one right here, hold shift, click on the bottom layer. And then I'm gonna click on this little folder right here to put them in a group. Then I'm gonna go up to layer. I'm gonna go duplicate group and click okay. Just call it a copy. I'm gonna hide this one. And on this top one, I'm just gonna go up to layer and I'm gonna go merge group. And that makes it into one kind of image. And then I'm gonna go up to filter, camera raw filter. And I'm just gonna play around with some stuff in here until I get the image looking the way that I want. Some of the basic ones that I like to do is I like just to add some kind of vibrance to the image, make it pop a little bit, and I'm just gonna add some kind of clarity to make it uh, kind of an interesting kind of texture to it here and click okay. That's all I'm gonna do to my image. And that's pretty much it. That's how you do a basic head swap in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.